All right, Murph, go fetch. <laughs> no, you're supposed to go get it. Here, ready? Go get it. You're not very good at dog games, are you? Well, do you like video games? <laughs> hey, awesome. I have to admit, I haven't played any video games in like two weeks since that depressive episode. But I've got some Game Boy games I've been wanting to try. Huh. How the heck do I... Where do I put the game in my PC? Aha! Starting off with Mega Man World 1, Dr. Wily's Revenge. Now this game actually came out after Mega Man 3, but they limited themselves to just content from the first two games. And if you're like me, you probably thought this was just a shortened port of the NES game to Game Boy. But there are actually a handful of differences. The first difference is that we only get four Robot Masters to choose from. Maybe because four portraits looks a lot better on a tiny screen, and also probably because they were worried they couldn't fit that many levels on the cartridge. The other main difference is it's hard! Like, really hard! For a couple of reasons. First of all, Mega Man controls in a way that feels a lot slower than the NES titles. Normally, when you jump around in Mega Man, you can control your movement midair with total freedom. But in this game, there's like a little bit of momentum that builds and decays, which makes tight jumps and dodging things midair a lot more difficult. The other reason it's hard is because it seems like Capcom sat down and just wanted to make it hard. I went to Cutman first because, ooh, whatever, it's Cutman. Goofy scissor head ass. Nope. His level's crazy! They took the conveyor belts for Metal Man's level, put them all over the place, and then put a bunch of bullshit on every single one! Like these cutting wheel boys that move at supersonic speeds and take eight shots to kill! And these demonically possessed scissors that spin around the room forcing you to play jump rope over them while on conveyor belts while avoiding cutting wheels and did I mention all of this is over a bottomless pit?! But hey, 20 minutes of dying later, we make it to the boss, and it's Cutman! You know, wimpy Cutman who's super easy and weak to the Mega Buster? Well, not this Cutman! This is Kung Fu Cutman! First of all, he's no longer knocked back by the Mega Buster, so you actually have to respect him. He throws rolling cutters that return to him, and he jumps when you get too close, which are both things he did on the NES, but tweaked in a way that makes it way less intuitive to dodge. This is the first Robot Master I fought that you have to run at him with confidence in order to avoid getting hit. But but once we figured that out, we were able to beat him. Ooh, that level was rough. At this point, I was feeling terrified because it took us 30 minutes to beat it and that's only the first stage. And it's especially scary because I've recently discovered a glitch in my programming that if I perform poorly at a video game, all my hair falls out. It hasn't been a problem so far because the other six games I've played were mostly fair. But these Game Boy games are built a little different. And although this game is a lot more difficult than, say, Mega Man 6, which we just got done playing, I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of unique features in the game that make it feel rewarding to push through. Although it uses the same bosses from the first game, each level uses new mechanics from Mega Man 2 as well as original ones to give them a fresh yet nostalgic feel. The Man stage is still a climbing stage with electrical traps and disappearing blocks, but the open air segments feel even more immersive with the Kaminari Goros from Airman stage. Iceman stage still has you slipping and sliding all over the place, but there are also blocks that melt under your feet and falling icicle puzzles that block your path forward if you don't progress quick enough. And not to mention the music is absolutely fire! Taking the bass melody for each Robot Master's original theme and remixing them in a way that sounds more epic, even when played through the Game Boy's unique hardware. Like listen to Lechman's theme. The additional high notes transitioning into the second half of the song gives a feeling of discovery as you climb higher and higher through the tower and encounter more difficult obstacles. I mean, I don't know anything about music theory, but it just sounds good to me. After beating Cutman, the rest of the stages are a little less difficult because the weapons are actually a pretty useful alternative to the buster. Rolling Cutter's super good, Firestorm super good, and of course we have E. Wait, now it's called L. And as usual, the bosses melt to their weaknesses. We even managed to beat Fireman at one health first try. He was actually way easier than his NES counterpart. But good lord, that weapon get screen is cursed! Mega Man, what have they done to you? And after clearing those first four levels, we're on to Dr. Wily. This level's pretty dang difficult, mostly because it consists of jumping blindly through spike bits. But to balance this, the item you get from Fireman, Carry, functions as an insurance for sections that would otherwise be unfair. And although the level is filled with enemies and it has a bit of a learning curve, eventually we make it to the boss graveyard. Haha, <laughs> just kidding! It's completely new Robot Masters from Mega Man 2! Reading the game's manual beforehand actually tells you this. Iceman, Elect, Trick? 
Man, what? Cut Man and Fire Man are tearing up the town. And those are the nice ones. But now we have to fight Quick Man, Heat Man, Bubble Man, and Flash Man. Oh man, I just realized there's no Guts Man in this game. Sorry, King. They're basically the same as when we fought them in Mega Man 2, but Bubble Man is a bit harder because him and all his projectiles constantly flash on the screen because of the Game Boy's hardware limitations and the frame slowdown, and god, my eyes hurt just looking at it. But every time we beat one of these new Robot Masters, we get their weapon as well. But it doesn't stop there. There's one more boss we have to face. <gasps> oh shit, a new Robot Master? Hey, are you Mega Man? Uh, yeah? Oh hell yeah. That makes my job really easy. Oh, okay. What's your job? Check the name tag. I just started today. Mega Man Killer? That's an oddly specific job. Eh, it's a seasonal position. Anchor's really cool. He has a weapon called the Barrier Spear that absorbs attacks and sends them back at you. It's kind of a sneaky bait and switch because we just got four new weapons to play with, but he resists everything but the Mega Buster. Which is odd because you'd think Wily would make sure his Mega Man Killer robot would be immune to the Mega Buster. But I mean, I guess it's hard to make something immune to PLASMA POWER! You get Mirror B! And with that, we head on to the next Wily stage, in space! Equipped with nine weapons and carry. The Mirror Buster is pretty cool. I mean, it's only useful against enemies that shoot projectiles, but it makes Sniper Joes and Mets a complete joke. Ah! This stage is pretty rough, mostly because it's got a lot of the same enemies and obstacles from Cutman's stage, and just the most evil disappearing block segment I've ever seen. Ah! Whew. This level is long and hard, forcing you to use everything at your disposal to reach the end and face Wily and his brand new machine. Ugh, we've had to deal with these cutting wheel enemies all game and he's spitting out more and more just to spite us! The first form goes down to the buster and his second form appears! I don't know how my Mega Man killer robot didn't kill you, but I'll just have to do it myself! You don't stand a chance thanks to my grabby claw and indestructible hole! Now hold still while I shoot you with this laser strong enough to destroy anything! Theoretically even my indestructible hole. No, not the mirror buster! You've somehow discovered my weakness! You truly are the most advanced robot of our time! Ah! Nice try, Dr. Wily, but no robot in the world can beat me. Except maybe, like, if you had an exact replica of me, one of us would probably beat the other. Yeah, it could probably beat me. Especially if I was from the future, and like, had some really powerful futuristic weapon, like, I don't know, like a high-powered pogo stick or something? Yeah, that could probably be enough to beat me, but unfortunately for you, there's no way that could ever- And so the space station is destroyed, and we ride a NASA space shuttle back to Earth. The credits roll, and we get to see the faces of all the robot masters we brutally destroyed. I'm assuming they got repaired, and that's why they're all so happy now. As for Dr. Wily, well... Help me. And just like that, we've beaten the first Game Boy game! Huh. You know, Murph, usually when I beat one of these, I get, like, a little trophy or something, but I don't see any- <gasps> Whoa! That's a little different, but I'll take it! On to Mega Man World 2! This game has a pretty unique story, but of course you gotta read the game's manual to hear it. Wee wee wee! Night to Mega Man! Night to Mega Man! Come in, Mega Man! Dr. Wawi has broken into the Quanos Institute and stolen the experimental time skimmer. We tried twacking him on Wada, but he simply vanished. My calculations show that he jumped approximately 37.426 years into the future. I have no idea what he plans to do, but Yor can be sure he'll be back. In the meantime, Rush found your secret underground lair, go beat up your robot masters guarding it, go 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 go. This game is formatted the same as the first game, starting with four robot masters from Mega Man 2, each with levels inspired by their original NES levels. But the main difference is instead of being stupidly hard, it's really, really easy. It feels much more like the NES games with tight and responsive controls, and the bosses are a bit nerfed compared to their NES counterparts. They also give you the ability to slide and use Rush like in Mega Man 3. Another big difference is the game's soundtrack. The previous game mostly dealt in remixes to the original boss themes with a couple of original tracks and the Wily stages and the boss fights and stuff like that. But everything in Mega Man World 2 is completely new, and they're all bangers! Metal Man's theme is my favorite. Take a listen! 
But ironically, what you just listened to is the pitch corrected version of the song. Weirdly enough, there was some kind of programming error with this game that makes it play everything one octave higher, and a portion of its notes are just completely off key. But multiple Mega Man fans have gone through the effort of running the music through software to show what they should have sounded like, and those versions sound pretty good. But yeah, with the original story and soundtrack, this is shaping up to be a lot more unique than the previous game. And it gets even crazier, because once we defeat the first four Robot Masters, we make it to Dr. Wily's underground lair! Much like the previous game, Dr. Wily's castle is home to the next four Robot Masters, except each of them gets their own level, which kind of begs the question, why don't they just make a second stage select instead? Well anyway, we gotta fight Hard Man, Magnet Man, Top Man, and Needle Man and get their weapons, and then finally move deeper into the castle to fight- <gasps> Are you another Mega Man killer? No. I'm another Mega Man in general. What? From the future? What? With a pogo stick? Wait, what? So yeah, this is Quint. He's actually Mega Man from the future, and Dr. Wily used the time skimmer to go to the future and reprogram him. Then he brought him back to kill the present Mega Man. But like, what time logic are we following here? If Quint did kill Mega Man, wouldn't that create a paradox? Or is it like a multiple timeline situation? Does this fight existentially scar Mega Man? Does he constantly lay awake at night knowing that 37.426 years into the future he's gonna get reprogrammed by Dr. Wily and brought back only to fight his past self? Yeah, I don't know about any of that. What I do know is he's really freaking easy, like the rest of this game. You get Sakugarne. Sakugarne D's nuts! Now, Vasakugarne is a really interesting concept. It does good damage and lets you traverse spikes, but it's placed in the same game as Metal Blade and the overpowered version of Rush Jet, so both of those quirks are a little less impressive. Well, anyway, all that's left to do is chase Dr. Wily from his underground base to his outer space base! Inside Wily's space fortress, there seems to be some kind of time distortion going on. There's lots of twists and turns, making it very maze-like, which fits into the whole time travel paradox aesthetic. It's not a very long level, and soon we make it to... Ha ha ha! Dr. Wily, what happened to you? Don't mess with time travel, Mega Man. Best mistake of my life. So we've got Wily, but he's tiny, and he's got a tiny Wily machine. I tried Sakugarne on the first phase, but it didn't seem to work too well. I think maybe his next phase might have been weak to it, but we'll never know. Either way, the Buster's plenty strong against him, and uh, wow, he's even got a third phase? He opts in a big dinosaur mech, and I don't even know how to explain- What is this? We beat him, and he tries to escape, but we got the missile weapon from him and shoot him down. Haha, <laughs> take that, Y. We? Oh. Oh god. Oh god, he's fucking dead! Mega Man, what have you done? Oh my god, we killed him! Jesus Christ! Oh no, oh god! No, don't roll the credits! What the- And that takes care of Mega Man World 2- Whoa! On to Mega Man World 3! This one is visually more impressive than the last two games. Like, look at the way the Robot Masters come out of a garage when you select them! That's pretty neat. And they actually broke the game up into two different stage selects with a giant Susie mini boss in between, rather than trying to cram the last four bosses into a single Wily stage. Each level has some really cool looking background and tile sprites, making the game much prettier to look at than the previous two titles. But I feel like we took a step backward with everything else. First of all, there's nothing unique about the story. Wily's doing something evil, and we gotta go beat him up. That's fine, but compared to the time travel shenanigans from the last game, it's a little less interesting. Secondly, we're back to doing remixes of the original original level themes, which is also fine because we've got some returning bangers like Snake and Sparkman songs, but I was really into the original tracks from the second game. And while this game is a lot easier than the first Game Boy game because we can slide, drink E-Tanks, and now even charge our buster, there are a couple levels in here that still feel a little unfair. Dive Man stage is your standard water level. Spikes everywhere, Metroids, you get it by now. The spike placement in this level is diabolical. Most evil so far. Especially this section with the rising tides and mines. Dive Man's level on NES had this too, but the difference is night and day. There's sometimes only one block of safety to stand on to avoid getting spiked, and the whole time you're getting swarmed by stingray after stingray after stingray! Ah! And speaking of things rising and falling and killing you instantly, don't even get me started on Dustman's level! It's like they took every single jump in this level and put some kind of hazard on it. Whether it's these stupid jumping robots, or spikes, or just a pit. And then they stretched each jump as far as they could so you could make it, but just barely. And it's utter torture because the whole time you're thinking to yourself, Wow, Rush Jet sure would make this level a lot easier. Spoiler alert, you get Rush Jet from Dustman! So you're stuck doing all these jumps with just a few pixels of leeway. Like, look at this! Look! 
You can only do this jump by summoning Rush onto the spike pit like a monster, or by damage boosting off of the shield attacker guy here. And the level doesn't even end there! Ironically, compared to all the awful jumps, the crusher section isn't even that bad. And eventually, after dying for 30 minutes, you start to memorize all the jumps and learn little tricks to get past them, but this level is so damn long and the fatigue is really starting to set in and- ah! <sighs> Look at me! I'm hideous! Well, nothing to do now but dust ourselves off and give it another try. We eventually do beat Dustman, but at what cost? And then it's on to Wily's castle. Wily, what the hell was up with those levels? What? Oh, do you mean all those spikes? Yes! Yeah, I did some cost analysis and figured out it was most efficient to spend more money on spikes and less on everything else. You bastard! If you think that was a lot of spikes, just wait until you meet my new intern. Hey, where the hell are you going? What's up, Mega Nerd? What? Who the hell are you? The name's Punk, but you can call me Dad. What? Why would I? Because I did your mom last night. Oh! Punk is one of the coolest designs so far. He fights by turning into Sanic the Hag Hag and by throwing little Sanic the Hag Hags at you. Just like Anchor, this Mega Man killer is only weak to the Buster. But since you can charge your Buster in this game, that makes him pretty easy. You get Screw Crusher. That's what I did to your mom last night. Shut up, Punk. And then it's off to Wily's real castle. And oops, it's basically just another Dustman stage. <laughs> Never getting my hair back, am I? You get the drill, spikes everywhere, big crusher section, spikes in the big crusher section. Fast forward 30 minutes of intense molding, we rematch the giant Susie. Screw Crusher is really, really good, especially against her. We quickly beat her and the stage isn't over yet? Okay, well, to be fair, the rest of the level isn't as bad. And it's just a short walk away to the actual boss. I've got zero lives left and I really don't want to replay that stage again. But luckily, his first stage is really easy to avoid. It still takes a while because you gotta jump to shoot him, but whenever he lands, the ground shakes and you can't jump when the ground's shaking. But yeah, we beat him. It's over, Mega Man. You may have defeated my machine's first form, but this is my most diabolical design yet. <gasps> You didn't. That's right. I made this machine one whole pixel taller than your maximum jump height. And then I made sure none of my robot guards had an arcing weapon. Ah ha ha, you're finished. Oh, an arcing weapon? Wait, where did you get that? No, that blasted intern. Foiled again by young people and their spiky hair. Spiky hair? <gasps> My spiky hair is back. Let's go. It's over, Wily. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do? Kill me like the last two games? Ooh. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's fine. It's fine. Sometimes I just need to vent, you know? Yeah, sure, man. You can vent any time. I appreciate it. In fact, I think I'll vent right now! You son of a bitch! We escape, the castle blows up, and Wily freaking dies again, and that's Mega Man World 3! Whoa! Wow, we beat three out of the five Mega Man World games, and so far I'm having a really good time. But I will say, aside from the extra characters and the occasional original song, the games aren't all that unique. They all feel kind of like a shrunk down version of the respective games while adding the bare minimum amount of new content to be considered a separate title. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, and I've had fun with them, but they didn't really blow me away. Oh well, let's go ahead and load up Mega Man World 4. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for watching! If you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe for more! I also want to give a special thanks to my Mega Chads for their extra support of the channel. You can become a Mega Chad today by clicking the join button below! You'll also unlock some neat perks and ensure that I can keep making videos like this! Also, thank you to everyone who's been sending in fan art! I'll be featuring fan art at the end of video, so if you have any pieces you want to send me, either send them to my email or use the tag PowerArtGG on Twitter! And in case you didn't know, I've recently started streaming! If you want extra live content in between uploads, check the live tab of the channel to see when I'm streaming next. Thanks again gamers, and I'll see you at the next one!